Today we're going to be looking at why the turn signals don't work in my Passat. This was a situation where the turn signals worked fine, and then one day I leaned over and hit the turn signal and nothing happened. So I'm going to walk you guys through the diagnostic process on how to figure out what's going on and see what we need to do to fix this problem. As always, our first step is going to be duplicating the problem, which I've already done, but we want to take a little bit broader look at what's going on. First thing we're going to do is we're going to check and see what's going on with the turn signals. Let's turn the key on and then we're going to move in and hit the left turn signal. Nothing happens. The right turn signal, nothing happens. Because the systems are related, let's go ahead and move over to the hazard switch and push the hazard switch and see what happens. And if that were functioning properly, it would be clicking as well as flashing. And if we move over to the cluster, nothing is happening here either. That means we have a problem beyond most likely the turn signal stock, but these two systems between the relay and the stock are related. Because both sides don't work, odds are we're not dealing with a bulb issue. So let's start simple and check the fuses. Now, if this were a little bit more modern vehicle that had bulb monitoring systems, then we might start by checking the faults with a scan tool. But because this vehicle doesn't have bulb monitoring, we're gonna jump right into the fuses. In the case of my Passat, the main fuse panel is located behind this trim panel here. We'll go ahead and remove that to gain access to the fuses. Now, the wonderful thing about my Passat is that it actually has the card that tells you what fuses go where. And in this case, it actually does tell you this symbol right here is going to be for turn signals. And if we flip it over, it shows us the location for the hazard switch fuse. So we're gonna check both of those two fuses. As I always recommend when you're checking fuses, don't just check the two that it says. Go ahead, you've already got your test light or your power probe out. Go ahead and just check them all really quick. It's ultra fast, especially if it's the fuses that you can check both terminals on. Some of the fuses in this car are blocked where you'd have to take the fuse out. But if they're not, go ahead and check them all. Now, I ran into a fuse that is not the same on both terminals. So here's the power side. So I know I have power coming into the fuse, but if I put it on the other terminal, I'm getting nothing, no beeping and no light lighting up. One of the other reasons I grab my power probe over a test light is so that you guys can hear the beeps that it makes. So this fuse is no good. What we can do is we can take our fuse removal tool and we can pull the fuse out and inspect it. And if you look really close, that fuse is blown. Before I do anything else, I'm gonna put that fuse back in. You can mark it. I'm gonna just leave this hang on there so I remember which one it was, or you can simply just remember which one it was. All right, let's go ahead and keep checking the rest of the fuses. Something to keep in mind, depending on the system that you're focusing on, you may want to have the car running, you may want to have the ignition on. Because we're dealing with the hazards, it shouldn't matter whether we have the key on or off, but for the turn signals, it will. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the key on, and we're going to check these other fuses at the top, the ones we can check anyway. So I got another one. Here's power, and then nothing on the other side. I can't check that one. These are all blocked. Let's go over here, this one. That one's good. And all those are blocked. So these are gonna be other lights that may not have power until you turn the lights on. So I'm turning the high beams on here. Let's go ahead and pull out this other fuse over here. And on quick inspection, we can see that this fuse is blown as well. So we have two blown fuses causing our problem. The initial thought would be, let's go ahead and put a couple of fuses back in it and see what happens. And that's not really a bad idea to do as long as you have extra fuses. So we're gonna need a 10 amp mini fuse and a 15 amp standard fuse. Let's go ahead and pull our 15 amp out and replace it and then replace our 10 amp fuse as well. You may also be thinking it could be a good idea to measure just how much current draw there is, 
But in this case, you know, I don't think it really matters because we know it's over 10 or 15 amps in this case because it's popping both of our fuses. Now, because I don't have an unlimited supply of fuses, we're gonna do a little bit more diagnosis before we just turn the key back on and check the turn signals. For our next step, we need to be thinking about the output side of this circuit, which is going to be the lights. We have tail lights that have turn signal bulbs, we have headlights that have turn signal bulbs, and we also have mirrors that have turn signal bulbs. To gain access to the tail lights, we have to remove some covers. That's not terribly challenging, but the easiest point to access to start disconnecting from the circuit and eliminating points of failure is going to be the headlights. So we're gonna walk up to the front, disconnect both headlights, and see what the turn signals do. All right, so the driver's side is fairly easy to disconnect. That's the driver's side headlight. When we come over to the passenger side, we'll notice that it's covered by this air duct. So let's grab some tools and take that air duct off. Removing this air duct is pretty straightforward. We're gonna take out the three Phillips heads, set those to the side, take the air box cover off, and then pull the ducting off. Should come off rather easy. And then we're gonna go ahead and reach in and disconnect the passenger side headlight as well. This is also a good opportunity to give a look inside the connector, make sure there's no corroded wires or water damage. Take a look at the driver's side too, and everything looks happy. Okay, so now that we have two good fuses, we have half of our circuit essentially disconnected. Let's go ahead and turn the key on and see what happens. Now, of course, the light's gonna be flashing fast, because we have a bulb disconnected on each side, but we have a better result than we did before. So that was left, and here's right. So now both of our turn signals work. Let's turn to the relay, push it, and see what happens. So our relay, you can hear it clicking and it's flashing, and we got both left and right flashing. Now, because both are working properly, this almost guarantees that the problem is inside of our headlights. If we had a short to ground problem in the harness, it should pop the fuse whether the headlights plugged in or not plugged in. So now it's time to see which of the two headlights is causing the problem. The best way to do that is gonna be to plug them in one at a time and see which one pops the fuse. So because this one's right here, let's go ahead, plug the passenger side in and try our turn signals again. Of course, our left turn signal is still flashing fast. Our right signal, though, seems to be working fine. Now let's turn this turn signal off and hit the hazards and just see what happens. So far, so good. Obviously, that's working. The fuse hasn't blown yet. Next, I wanna disconnect the passenger side again and test the driver's side separately. So let's plug the driver's side in. All right, so this is gonna be the test of the front headlight, left side plugged in. We hit our turn signal and it works. Let's move over to the hazard and it works. All right, so a bit of an unexpected turn, but let's go ahead and plug both of them in and see what happens. We also now need to be thinking, hey, maybe we have an intermittent problem where maybe we have wiring moving around while the vehicle's moving and grounding out and popping the fuse that way. All right, let's see what happens with everything connected back together. Now, this is a case where a lot of people may kick the car down the road and say that it was just a blown fuse. We are not going to do that. We are going to figure out exactly what's going on. So our next step is gonna be called a wiggle test. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the hazards on and then we're gonna go wiggle the wires and tap on the headlights and see what happens and maybe we can get it to quit working. I actually didn't get all the way to the front of the vehicle before it quit working. That little tap of the turn signal stock just popped the fuse. All right, let's go back to disconnecting the passenger side. We're gonna just turn the driver's side on and leave it on for a few seconds. It didn't even take one click of the turn signal to pop that fuse. It looks like the issue is inside our driver's headlight. Let's pull the cover off and see if we can figure out what exactly is causing that fuse to pop. Inside the headlight is of course wiring that goes to all the bulbs. And one of the really common problems is the sheathing on the wiring 
actually breaks. So what I think is happening is that one of the wires for the turn signal is actually grounding out either on itself, on the harness, or somewhere in the headlight. There you guys go, a little bit of back and forth with the fuses and replacing a couple of them, all to find out that we had bad wiring inside the left headlight. Now, in order to replace the wiring inside the headlight, the bumper cover is coming off, so I actually am going to just go ahead and do both headlights. The sheathing on those wires is really, really bad about cracking. This is a super common problem on this generation Passat, so I'm gonna go ahead and do them both at the same time. There are also a bunch of other ways you could have diagnosed this, but what I wanted to give you guys is some really easy ways to think about how to diagnose this and things that you don't need uh, an amp clamp for or a multimeter for. You could do simply all of this with only a test light. You could have even done this just by pulling the fuses out and looking at them to see that they're blown. I don't prefer to check fuses that way, but if you don't have anything, you know, you don't have a power probe or you don't have a test light, one, I think they're really good investments if you're gonna be fixing your own car. But two, this is another way you could do that. This would have cost all of like $1.25 worth of fuses in order to get fixed. And you didn't have to pay the dealership or a shop $100 plus in order to diagnose a problem. So with that, I'm gonna wrap it up. Questions, comments, other ways to diagnose this, go ahead and put that down in the comment section. If you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. Always appreciate that. Don't forget to subscribe and ding the notification bell on YouTube or on the blog at humblemechanic.com. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, Snapchat. All right, guys, hey, thanks so much for watching. Look forward to the video on how to fix this next time. Thanks so much, and I will see you again soon.